Do you remember my video where a few months ago I made tabletop ready minis and painted this mini with a gradiented wing scheme that looked like fire and I thought it was really awesome? Well, I looked at it the other day and thought, man, that gradient would look great inside some dice. But you know what they say about best laid plans. Let's start this video off by saying these dice do not turn out how I want them to, yet, with a huge yet, but we'll come back to that. For now, we're gonna take our dice molds and go ahead and start mixing up some resin to put inside of them. We don't really have anything special to do with with this resin, it's a one-to-one -one by volume mixture resin for Envirotex Light Resin, but we need a solid surface on which to make our gradient. So we're gonna fill up the inside molds with resin and then paint over them. I'm using the same shell dice molds that I've done in the past few videos, and I'll put that in the top right right now, Bing, if you wanna go check that out. And the insides have no numbers on them, so we're gonna have nice flat surfaces to get a really smooth gradient. I've done nothing to this resin, it is very plain. We haven't added any mica powder or any glitter because we're not gonna see it as soon as we start painting it. I take my lighter and pop any surface bubbles to make sure there's not going to be any gaps or voids whenever I cover it in this lid, which I also put some resin on. This lid should just snugly fit right over the top after shimmying it on just a little bit. It's got nice little keys and registration marks there, and now it's just ready to go into the pressure pot. Honestly, you probably don't need the pressure pot for a set like this because you're not going to see the bubbles. Again, we're going to cover it in paint, but for sake of a balanced dice for rolling and an extremely smooth surface with with no gaps and voids, I do it anyway. After being in the pressure pot for 24 hours, the resin has cured enough and solidified to where I can take these out and begin working on them with paint. So I begin the process of removing them from the mold and we have some really crystal clear glass looking blank dice. They have no numbers on them, but that's great. We want a really smooth surface so that we can see a gradual transition on the gradient that we plan on making. But man, those turned out really good. This is the power of the pressure pot. We have some glass looking dice with no inclusions. Now I'm gonna set them on a plate and go prime them. If you want a better, more finer mist primer, go for it, but Rust-Oleum will work for my purposes. And so I'm going to shake up this white primer. I do recommend it being white as that's an easy background to paint upon, where black you might have a more dulled color. As I started priming, I realized, whoops, probably should have put a glove on that. My hand was white by the time I was done priming these, and I definitely overprimed them because I was worried about my hand now being white. But we have our surfaces in which we can start to do our gradient painting. They look like a perfect canvas for us to do that gradient painting. Everything should work fine, though it is hard to light for black black gloves and white objects, so it's hard to see any details as I'm holding it in my hand here. Everything does look ready to go though, so now we have all of our materials to start making gradient dice, and now it's time to start airbrushing now. Or at least that's what this airbrush would want me to do, however it is, whew, I'm gonna get to some problems here, and you'll see why this whole video was a failure. As I set up the air compressor and the airbrush, I'm going to use my contrast I end in yellow, just like I used in the tabletop ready miniature video, because it makes a nice gradient from yellow to an orangish red and then I can just layer red on top of it. I set up all of my stuff that I need for the airbrush including a backing out of cardboard and put way too much paint inside of my airbrush but that's not the problem. The problem is look I'm not getting any paint out of my airbrush. The problems that I have eventually boil down to that this airbrush stopped working. Now, this could be a catastrophic failure for a project. If you have something that you need to get done and a tool that you use that costs you a couple hundred dollars breaks down, you've got an issue. I've taken this whole thing apart multiple times and couldn't get it to work. I got it to work a little bit. I got some paint coming out of it, but more problems kept arising. In the chamber that holds all the paint, you'll begin to see there's air bubbles coming up into the paint. Not only that, the needle needed to be cleaned and everything just feels broken. And so to get this fixed, it's probably going to take a couple weeks for me to find somebody who can fix it or keep trying to do it myself, though I have not seen much progress. You can see here, I, I do get some more paint coming out of it and I just wanted to get this video finished because I didn't want to disappoint you all. I wanted to be able to show, hey, look, I got some paint coming out of it. It's smoother now. It's not as splattery. So let me just give this a shot. Maybe I can make it work just enough to get through these dice. But as soon as I use it, it starts to clog up and something is just inherently broken within the air gun. You can see here it starts to look okay. I can maybe layer some paint on, but then huge bits of paint start globbing onto the dice. The end result of this thing is not good looking. This doesn't look horribly bad. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but uh, what looks bad is this, the underside where paint would start to pool on the bottom of it. So my airbrush is broken. This project is now a failure. However, you could wet blend and make a nice gradient, but I just don't have that skill set. I'm going to practice so that I can show you two ways to go about doing this, but I just that's going to take longer for me to get good at than it is going to be to use the airbrush. So we'll deal with that in the future. Now, there's two ways you can deal with a project like this. You can say, hey, something broke and this is just a 
a failure in the system that I can't fix, and so I am done with this project. And that is totally fine. That happens to me more often than you'd ever see on this channel, and I used to show those failures all the time, and I want to get back to that, because I think it's important that you all know that stuff happens, and it means you can't exactly get stuff done like you'd plan to. So this is a failure. This didn't happen like I wanted it to, but that's okay. We're going to try and fix that, though, by taking a failure and trying to make it better. Not only am I going to get my airbrush fixed or get a new one so that we can do this properly, I'm going to learn how to wet blend and do a gradient, and we're going to take these dice, which I have now reprimed, and fix them and make them even better. So we're going to fix these dice. We're going to try new things this year. We're not going to let our failures keep us down in 2022, but if they do happen, that's okay too. 2022, as a matter of fact, this this year is the year of That's Okay 2022, so if I can give any hint on the next video that comes out, it's that we're going to fix these happy little accidents.